In this video, I'll demonstrate how to sort your collections that are based on the iList interface by using the uh, iComparable interface within your custom objects. I would recommend that you take a look at video 2030, the intro to collections video, in order to understand a little bit more of the background behind this. So what I've got is a uh, Visual Basic console application called iList Sorting VB. And what we'll do, what I've already done, is created uh, three instances of cars, the Dodge, Jaguar, and the Mercedes, and added them to an ArrayList collection. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to, um, to two. So that will give us the appropriate size, and we're going to loop through each one of them. And let me go ahead and build that just to make sure it works. And then we'll open this up and run it from our command line. Seems to work just fine. So now what we want to do is sort these by their year. Uh, that might be a little bit difficult to do if we were to just take the sort object at face value and just go ahead and, and pass it in. So we'll go cars.sort and then we'll loop through these. Now let's see what happens when we do this. We get a uh, a problem specified I comparer through an exception. We did not implement the I comparer interface, is what this is telling us. And therefore, that's what we need to do in order to ena enable sorting within our iList collection. Let's go ahead and continue. So, in order to do this, what we'll need to do is scroll down to our class, public class car, and we're going to need to implement the I comparable interface. Now notice as soon as I hit the enter key and go to the next line that it puts a blue squiggly line underneath of it and you think to yourself well I haven't done anything wrong yet and this scrolls off the side of the screen but uh, basically what it says is that your class has to implement overridable overloads function compare to as integer for interface system I comparable. What this means is that there is a function that we must implement in order for our car to truly say that it implements the I comparable interface. Now, I was doing this the hard way, and a friend of mine showed me something you can do in Visual Basic that you can't do in C sharp, and that is to select the I comparable from the drop down list at the top, and then select the compare to function on the right hand side and what this does is it creates our public function public function compare to and it has the correct input parameters it has the correct return value and it has the correct implement statement system i comparable compare to so it gives us the stub that we need in order to implement our compare to function within our class. So the next thing I'm going to do is paste some code in. Uh, the object that's passed in is of type object. So the first thing you'll need to do is cast it to an object that you can use. So I've dimensioned the compare to car as a car equal to the OBJ, which is the object that's passed in and then I return me my year so this instance of the car and I'll subtract from it the compare to cars year now this is very important the compare to expects an integer to be returned and the integer has to either be a negative number a zero or a positive number if it's zero that means that the two objects in being compared are exactly the same value. So if the year was 2000 and this year was 2000, then they would be equal. If um, my car was newer, then it would come out to be a positive number. So this instance of the car was 2000 and we're comparing it to a car that was created in 1998 that would return 2, in which case that means that this instance of the class is newer and vice versa. If this was older it would return a negative number. And the sorting function uses compare to in order to determine 
where it should place the current instance it's evaluating in the list of all of the items within the collection. So no matter how it does it, whether it's a bubble sort or any type of sorting function, it needs to know um, when I compare this item to another item, which one comes out on top and which one comes out on bottom of the sort. So this is how you would implement this. So I'm going to go ahead and save and we're going to build it then we'll bring it up in our console window and so let's take a look at this first time through it's just a simple loop these are the order in which they were added to our collection the Dodge Viper, the Jaguar XJ8 and the Mercedes SL55 now we're sorting by year and notice that we have 2001, 2002, 2003. Jaguar's first, the Dodge is second, and the Mercedes is third. So we were successfully able to sort our collection. Even though the, it's a collection of custom objects, we were able to do this by implementing the iComparable interface and specifically the compareTo function. So this is great. There's one other uh, method that relies on the iComparable interface in order to work, and I wanted to show you that. It's the binary search method that you'll find on some of the uh, some of the iList collection implementations. So underneath here, I'm going to put another two lines of code. I'm going to create a new object called location of car one as integer equal to cars dot binary search, and I pass in car one and then I'll write out where the location is found. So this binary search needs to have the iComparable interface implemented. Specifically it'll need the, um, the compareTo method. So let's go ahead and save this, build it, so that we can find a specific item within our list. Let's go ahead and run this again and notice here that it found the car at location 1. And the object we were looking for was the uh, the Viper and it is indeed at location 1. The first one is 0 and the second one is location 1. So it found it in the right spot. So I hope that this made sorting a little bit clearer and how to use the iComparable um, interface within your applications in order to enable sorting on custom objects uh, within your collections. As we talked about before, iComparable is just one of the interfaces that enable uh, sorting and in this case searching as well. There's another one called iComparer and allows us to compare two t objects of different types and also sealed objects. We'll talk about that in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this and that you learned a lot. Thank you.